So, Minister Kang, the mm -hmm. special summit, the commemorative mm -hmm. summit between mm -hmm. South Korea and ASEAN members, this won't be the first time. South mm -hmm. Korea will be hosting it for the third time. Mm -hmm. uh, the last one was in 2009 and mm -hmm. 2014. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us more about the preparations and mm -hmm. how it's different from the previous editions? Well, in terms of the preparations, um, since agreeing with ASEAN uh, that we would have this commemorative summit, uh, it's been a whole of government effort to prepare for this very special moment. Um, so, you know, in the months leading up to the summit, there have been various uh, ministerial dialogues uh, on, on both sides um, at the official level. Uh, but we've also wanted to reach out to the public to bring in the public engagement, the people on board in terms of the preparations for this, uh, for this event. Um, I chair an intergovernmental committee uh, preparing for this, uh, and we've met several times. We will be having another uh, meeting today, I believe, or tomorrow to take final last minute stock of the preparations. We have a team set up by the foreign ministry um, to, to work out the, 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 you know, every detail of the logistics involved because we are, at the end of the day, welcoming leaders of 10 countries um, to Busan. Um, our bureau in charge of the substance of the discussion has been upgraded to an ASEAN bureau, really just to focus on ASEAN-related matters. And the uh, president took the cabinet down to Busan to have the the weekly cabinet meeting there um, at a room in Mexico where we will be having the commemorative summit um, just to highlight the importance of this event to the citizens of Busan but also also the country as a whole and afterwards I uh, took the time to go and check out the venue uh, there's still a lot of work I saw workers, you know, putting up new lighting and, and, and panels. Um, we will be bringing in new furniture, uh, but very assured that things are on track. Um, and the, the hardware of the, the conference is, uh, will be uh, pitch perfect. Um, we are also working on the substance of the conference, which is the agenda, the outcome, and on that also very assured through my ASEAN bureau colleagues, and my deputy minister, who has been in the SOM, he's the senior official in charge of our relations with ASEAN and very much um, uh, excited about the, the substantive outcome of the summit as well. As I said, we are bringing the public aboard in this preparations. For example, um, we've had a, uh, a train ride of, of Koreans and, and people from ASEAN from various sectors of life um, joining a train ride together for a couple of days, visiting key cities in this country, enjoying this, the, the attractions that the city has to offer, but also enjoying speeches, lectures, talks, discussions, and, and performing art, uh, artists while they were uh, 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 riding the train together. Um, we've also had, and I myself have personally uh, have personally taken part. We've brought the, you know, ASEAN countries are very uh, famous for the coffee, uh, and each country with a unique, uh, unique taste to, to the coffee beans that they produce. We brought it all together, and blended it to the right optimal taste, and we called it the ASEAN blend. And we have two coffee trucks that are traveling around the country to where people meet uh, to share the ASEAN blend coffee uh, with uh, Korean consumers. And we're all hoping that this enhances the public awareness and, and public excitement of, about this commemorative summit. Right, a uh, blending pot instead of a melting pot mm -hmm. of various uh, ethnicities mm -hmm. and diverse mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. I suppose. Mm -hmm. And in Southeast Asian countries, I believe they call coffee kopi in their own Mm -hmm. uh, unique accent, mm -hmm. as we have our own. Mm -hmm. uh, will we see all 10 ASEAN member heads taking part in the summit? Yes, yes. Um, all 10 have um, confirmed participation. Um, the, the, the ROK, the summit, so we will have the uh, ASEAN summit. We will also have a summit of ROK and Mekong leaders, and all 10 are 
coming. Some will be coming before to have bilateral visits. Um, some will be staying on for a one or two more days to ha also have um, official bilateral discussions with uh, President Moon. And, and this, the remaining six will be also having a short, brief summit discussions with uh, President uh, Moon. So yes, all ten uh, taking part in the ASEAN ROK summit discussions and the ROK Mekong discussions, but also having bilateral meetings with the president. So for these sessions, what will be some of the key agenda items? Mm -hmm. For the ROK ASEAN summit, um, as I said, taking stock of the past 30 years and spelling out the future, uh, a shared vision for the next 30 years. Uh, we're also very much um, keen on what interests ASEAN. And ASEAN, I think uh, the key word within ASEAN is connectivity. Um, ASEAN is a very diverse region um, with varying levels of economic development, varying cultures, uh, different strength in terms of the natural resources, different potential uh, for future growth. And ASEAN has this vision of becoming a truly integrated ASEAN community. And that means connecting, uh, whether it's hardware or software, infrastructure, aviation, water resources management. And, and of course, these are all areas that Korea has to, had to grapple with and still do uh, in our you know, half century national growth trajectories. So we have a lot to share. We also want to explore new horizons in this connectivity uh, through uh, exchanges of inf um, expertise with the ASEAN countries. So connectivity will be a big part of the discussions at the, at the, the summit. On the Mekong side, uh, the Korea Mekong side, our dialogue with Mekong was at the ministerial level. Uh, an annual ministerial meeting between uh, Korea and the Mekong, five Mekong countries. This time we're upgrading it to the summit level for the first time because we see the growing importance of Me the Mekong region. Um, Mekong is a subgrouping within ASEAN, um, the five Mekong countries, and, and they are in fact the fastest growing uh, part of ASEAN with something like six to seven percent annual growth by individual countries. Huge potential in terms of the natural resources, very strategically located. So, you know, perfect timing for us to upgrade our engagement with Mekong as well uh, to the summit level. I heard it's a worthwhile investment today mm -hmm. to study and, uh, their language and culture as well. Mm -hmm. these yes, days. yes, yes. Uh, I think um, one of the things that we're concentrating on um, in, in the summit, um, you know, this, the, one thing I should say, the newness of the summit this time compared with the past two previous summits is that this is all part of our new southern policy um, that the president has been championing. Uh, championing. Uh, and this is, you know, we, we want to reach beyond the CMIR region. Uh, of course, the four countries that surround us are, are vitally important partners, but I think now, Korea, as the 11th largest uh, economy in the world, with 28 million traveling uh, you know, to every corner of the world, it's time for us to reach out much more vigorously and robustly beyond this immediate neighborhood. And, and that's our new southern policy. That's our new northern policy. And a key partner in our new southern, of course, is ASEAN. And so we, this commemorative summit is embedded in that larger policy framework that makes it uh, qualitatively different from the two previous summits. Of course, we build upon the, uh, the outcome and the achievements of the, the two previous summits, but we truly mean it when, when we're saying our new Southern policy with ASEAN at the core uh, is, is, um, you know, is to spell out a vision together with ASEAN as a key neighbor and, and a, a vital partner. Are there any specific areas the two sides, ASEAN and South Korea, should mm -hmm. work closer together on to strengthen their ties? Um, I think we build our new Southern policy on the three pillars of people, 
prosperity and peace. I think prosperity, the substantive, the business, the economic side of it, there's the business logic uh, that our companies, our startups are keen to build upon. So I think the government role is very much to come behind that and support that. But on the people side, uh, yes, K-pop is hugely popular. Um, and uh, many uh, Southeast Asians come to Korea to work um, and to marry and, and form um, families and also to study. We have many uh, students um, who are studying uh, at various levels in our universities. But when you take a survey of uh, the perceptions, it tr turns out that that, you know, that understanding is quite shallow. A recent survey indicates that perhaps 10% uh, you know, of our Korean adults have no idea what ASEAN is. 50% say they barely know the name ASEAN. Um, other surveys indicate that people know ASEAN mainly as a tourist destination or a resort area or linked to poverty or, or underdevelopment. And, and I think so there's a lot more work to be done to enhance mutual understanding, to strengthen the, the cultural exchanges, the people to people exchanges. So to focus on that people dimension is, has been, uh, has been um, central to our, our effort in preparing for the summit. And it will continue to be a key part of our efforts going forward beyond the summit. Increasing awareness and understanding between the people seems to be a very important mm -hmm. homework mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, will President Moon Jae-in have time to hold separate uh, bilateral talks on the mm -hmm. sidelines with mm -hmm. every one of the heads taking part? Yes, yes. As I, you know, he, the uh, the timing is uh, very brief. Uh, so it's been a juggle trying to manage the president's schedule, but also the, the schedule of the visiting uh, presidents and prime ministers. But we will, um, and we will be having, you know, the, you know yeah, that, as I said, two, two official visits before the, the, the summit and two official visits afterwards. But in between, um, charting out time and coordinating with the, the, the visiting uh, presidents and prime ministers so that, yes, they will have, uh, my president will have bilateral engagements with each of the 10 that summit tiers. You mentioned connectivity as a very important ingredient mm -hmm. in terms of regional uh, uh, cooperation and of mm -hmm. course the essential idea that integrates the ASEAN region. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the key industries that can help improve connectivity and what can South Korea bring to the table to mm -hmm. help in that effort? Um, ASEAN has a master plan on ASEAN connectivity and, and I think uh, five key areas. One is infrastructure, roads, waterways, um, and, and so on, and logistics, the flow of things uh, within the region, IT, digital innovation, regulation, in harmonization of regulations among the countries, and, and then, you know, people mobility, uh, making it easier for people to visit um, uh, one another. And, and we, can, we want to support that. As I said, and these are all areas that we still are trying to improve our game, uh, push new horizons. And I think linking up with ASEAN as they pursue this uh, agenda of connectivity, we can also grow. Right. Uh, we are the leader in some of these areas, yes. but of course we can always learn and mm -hmm. never be uh, too mm -hmm cocky about mm -hmm. being at top. Yeah, yes. The Korea ASEAN Special Summit will be held in Busan, not just for one day, but mm -hmm. for three days starting mm -hmm. on November 25th. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there are plenty of exciting and sideline events mm -hmm. uh, lined up. Could mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit more about them? We call all of this a boom up towards the summit. Um, D minus 40, D minus 20, D minus 15. We've had various events. D minus one on the, on the eve of the summit, on the 24th, um, in Changwon, um, the Ministry of Culture is organizing uh, what they bill as an ASEAN Fantasia uh, that will bring together top performing artists from the ASEAN countries as well as our own uh, K-pop stars uh, for an evening of exciting musical performances. So that will sort of uh, start off uh, the, the, the uh, summit events. Um, there will also be 
the usual CEO summit that brings in business leaders from the, the 10, 11 countries, startup summit, because both Korea and ASEAN countries are keen to grow medium, small and medium, and, and venture firms. So there will be a separate startup summit. We're also organizing an innovation forum on culture. Um, because culture is also evolving, growing, and we want to see where the innovative ideas have led to the huge popularity of K-pop in Southeast Asia, for example, and how to pretty much repeat the same boom of ASEAN pop culture in Korea. And we will be having some exciting names uh, at speaking at that Culture Innovation Forum. We will also have a uh, smart city uh, fair. Smart city, uh, I should point out, is also something that is concentrating minds, both in my country, but also in, in ASEAN. ASEAN has a smart city network initiative, and very keen to join with our uh, smart city initiatives. So in terms of these exciting side events also, uh, a lot more uh, diverse and a lot more uh, rich uh, than the previous summits. And also, uh, I should add, on the Mekong side, um, as the Korea-Mekong summit uh, takes place, we will be preparing a Korea-Mekong biodiversity uh, special exhibition so that uh, the, uh, the leaders can finish and, and tour this um, exhibition together because Biodiversity, i.e. preserving the nature in the, the stage of the climate change challenge in terms of natural disasters becoming much more frequent and severe, and how to pull the best of our uh, expertise to preserve that diversity is, uh, is the theme of that exhibition. We are also assisting, uh, working with uh, ASEAN to open up an ASEAN Biodiversity Center um, in, in Mimi. Myanmar. So biodiversity, uh, nature preservation, management of water resources is a big agenda on our collaboration with Mekong. And these are all, as, as I explained, indicated in the uh, side events that we are uh, preparing. Looks like calling them side events will be the understatement of the year. Yes, <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> Well, before we move on to our next topic, which is the South Korea Mekong Nation Summit, mm -hmm. we have a special clip. So let's take a closer look into what makes this South Korea Mekong Summit extra special. Let's roll the clip. The South Korea Mekong mm -hmm. Summit. This mm -hmm. will be the first time the two sides are holding a top level meeting mm -hmm. to discuss their relations. Yes, so this yes. is a very special event. Yes, 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 uh, absolutely. We've had ministerial dialogue with the Mekong country since 2011, i.e., an annual uh, Korean foreign ministers and the foreign ministers of the five Mekong countries meeting. Uh, but we're taking that to the summit level. Um, and th so this will be the first ROK Mekong summit. Uh, Mekong, as I said, is a subgroup within the ASEAN uh, region, within the ASEAN community. And, and they share that, you know, magnanimous river uh, uh, that is the Mekong. And uh, so they have their common challenges in managing uh, this uh, huge um, gift of nature. Uh, but they all, they're also the pocket of growth that is leading the ASEAN uh, economic uh, development these days. Uh, it's also a region uh, with great natural resources, so many countries are wanting to forge closer ties with Mekong, China, India, uh, the U.S. And, uh, you know, given the, the importance of this region, um, Mekong and ASEAN, we have decided to upgrade that to the summit level, of course, in agreement with the Mekong countries, uh, because they also see a uh, great potential for uh, their bilateral as well as their regional, sub-regional collaboration with South Korea. Could you outline for us some of the major discussion topics and, of course, the anticipated accomplishment from this maiden event? When President Moon visited Laos, he made a speech on his vision for uh, um, the Korea-Mekong collaboration. And, you know, it was a very broad vision of, of wanting to build co-prosperity 
based upon shared experiences, based upon the, the, the sustainability of, of uh, the collaboration, and based upon the shared aspiration for greater peace and stability. And the summit discussion will therefore be an opportunity to spell out the details of this vision. And we want then to um, bring that into a Han Mekong declaration. And uh, I think the way the discussions are going, it will be a very substantive um, declaration. You know, we begin, as I said, with people, prosperity, and peace. And on people, uh, we have uh, plans to upgrade our, uh, our human resources development programs with the Mekong countries, for example. On prosperity, we have plans to beef up our development assistance uh, that we have been doing over the many years to in their rural communities, rural agricultural communities development, uh, very much sharing our experience with the Semar movement. And on peace, um, many of these countries are, are struggling with the after effects of uh, war. And so, you know, clearing unexpo unexploded ordinances, I think they're called, is a huge challenge. And we work with UN agencies in, in many of these countries to deal with that challenge. So building safe, peaceful, and prosperous rural communities um, hits both the prosperity and the, the peace mark. And so some of these ideas will be, will be reflected in the declaration that we are working on. Right. Uh, back in September, President Moon Jae-in laid out his vision mm -hmm. for South Korea's relations mm -hmm. with Mekong nations, mm -hmm. and he hopes to see the miracle of the Hangang River spread yes. out to the miracle of yes. the Mekong River, yes. as in Han Mekong, as yes. you earlier mentioned. Uh. So what are some of the essential elements that can help achieve this goal of co-prosperity? Oh, I, as I said, um, it's underpinned by this three dimensions of sharedness, uh, sustainability, and, and peace. And I think uh, with the Mekong countries, as I said, the key challenge for the Mekong countries is the development gap vis-a-vis uh, -vis the rest of the ASEAN community. And so bringing our Korea's own development expertise and experience to assist them in bridging that gap is, I think, uh, what, is what the Mekong countries are, are looking for in their uh, greater collaboration with South Korea. And I think we have uh, a lot to, to bring to the table when it comes to that, that, that challenge of bridging the development gap. Well, we're going to move on to our final topic of mm -hmm. our session, which is the New Southern Policy. Mm -hmm. So we have a clip explaining to our viewers the details of the New Southern Policy, the main foreign policy of the Moon Jae-in administration. So two years has passed mm -hmm. since the, the new Southern policy was announced by President Moon Jae-in. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, he has vi managed to visit all related mm -hmm. nations. Mm -hmm. um, so far, what are some of the tangible progress made under the new Southern policy? Oh, I think um, the, the volume of uh, trade has increased by about $10 billion uh, to $160 billion at the end of last year. Uh, the people traffic have also, has also increased, hitting 11 million at the end of last year. The number of uh, South e Southeast Asian students in Korea have also um, increased a great deal. So the figures speak for themselves. Uh, but beyond the figures, Southeast Asia is now our biggest um, market for our construction firms. You know, now, it used to be the Gulf countries, it's, it's now the Southeast Asian countries where you find many of our construction firms engaged in mega infrastructure projects. Um, I think, so, and if, yes, President Moon has visited all 10 ASEAN countries, and that alone is a huge accomplishment, to be able to do that within two years of his term, despite the businesses of managing the, the peace process here and um, managing our relations with the four big countries. Uh, but this is demonstrate his strong political will um, to forge closer ties with the 10 ASEAN countries and, and ASEAN in, 
as a whole. Um, and I think, so this of course then feeds into the, the preparations for the summit. Um, so South, the new Southern policy, as I said, is not a choice, it's a, it's, it's a must. As we see the future of Korea, um, our, the peace, you know, we ne really need to reach out much more vigorously uh, to beyond the, our immediate neighbors to 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 Southeast Asia, to 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 India and and beyond. Um, and uh, when we do it, we do it with you know genuine intentions to grow together and to prosper together in greater peace. Right, lots of untapped potential and mm. atrophied muscles to flex and work mm. out mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, the principle of 3P people, prosperity and peace is vital. Mm -hmm. uh, what are Korea's direction and strategy in helping to achieve these values? Um, I think it, we have a, for, you know, a, a whole of government special committee on our new southern policy headed by the economic advisor to the president. Um, and the foreign ministry has a big part in that committee. Uh, the committee has worked out 16 key areas and 57 key projects to, to push the boundaries on our new southern policy. And, and many of them are reflected in the ASEAN uh, summit preparations. Um, I think the it's in, in, in the all captured in this idea of a people-centered community of peace and prosperity. And on the peace side, I should also emphasize that the ASEAN countries, many of them have um, diplomatic relations with North Korea. And they very much want to contribute to the peace process. They've been hugely supportive uh, throughout the past two years, and they want to be uh, that supportive, constructive voice in support of our peace process. Um, so on, it's, it's both side, both ways, whether it's people, prosperity, or peace, it's you know, mutual help, mutual assistance, so that Korea and ASEAN can grow, at, grow together, become more prosperous and more peaceful. Everything is closely intertwined of course. in one way or another. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of being intertwined, the U.S., China, and Russia, they have come up with their own uh, plans to seek regional cooperation. Mm -hmm. How does Korea's vision, including the new Southern policy, mm -hmm. compare to these strategies mm -hmm. by these nations? Well, I think the, the strategies, uh, the, you know, the, that countries are coming up with uh, their strategies for the region is, a, is an indication of the growing importance of this region, the growing importance of ASEAN and ASEAN centrality. Um, we say we are open to collaboration with uh, the other strategies um, in areas where our, our, our plans and our interests come together uh, based upon the principles of inclusiveness, um, openness, and transparency, and also based upon international norms. So we have uh, just come out with a, a joint fact sheet um, spelling out where the U.S. strategy of the, for the Indo-Pacific meets, um, converges with our own new southern policy and uh, where we will collaborate to the benefit of, of uh, our partners in, in Southeast Asia. And we will do the same and with uh, other initiatives, for example, such as China's One Belt and One Road. Inclusiveness and openness is difficult but important in this era mm -hmm. of rapid change and mm -hmm. where we can't ex anticipate where the change will come from. Mm -hmm. uh, closing our session today, mm -hmm. our last question, uh, 30 years of strong relationship mm -hmm. between South Korea and ASEAN members, and mm -hmm. we're looking forward to more decades of good relationships mm -hmm. to come. Could you share with us your views on the road ahead for the next decades to come? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I can only speak in very broad terms, but in, I think Korea and ASEAN, we're all you know, small, medium countries. Uh, we ha share some painful experience of the past, whether it's um, colonial rule, uh, aggression, civil war, and I think um, we very much are, are 
of the same mind in having no other motive than to really become closer together uh, in peace and prosperity. So I think that shared mindset will keep us on track as we build the next 30 years of ASEAN-Korea uh, partnership. Right, this is a very exciting time, not just for South Korea and ASEAN members, mm -hmm. but the rest of the world, as they will be closely watching this very special event, mm -hmm. the commemorative summit between mm -hmm. the two sides. And uh, we do hope anticipated progress is made, and then some. Yes, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you so much for making thank time for you. us and today. And Arirang has a huge role to play uh, in the lead up, but also post Busan summit, because this is not going to be just a one-off event. As I say, it will be the, the beginning of our new Southern policy 2.0 um, to it will be the launching pad for a much upgraded um, Korea-ASEAN partnership. We're happy to be an important cog in the wheel. Uh, thank you for highlighting that before we wrap things up. And we appreciate you, uh, Foreign Minister Kang Yong-hwan, coming here and making our program.